Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to this very interesting case. This is part two. So this is infected mastoid cavity condylectomy guy back in the back in the clinic. If you've not seen part one, not much of this case will make sense to you. So I'll link it down in the description box below, but go and see the first video where I explain everything and then come back. So what's happened here? Um, Condylectomy guy has gone to see my friend Anavan, who's an ENT surgeon, or rather he's a, an otologist, which is a, a doctor specialising in ear conditions. And uh, Anavan's had a look inside the cavity. He's kind of attempted to debride more of the necrotic tissue and stuff like that. And um, that's why it looks a little bit more cleaner, but also bloody. So the granulation tissue off to the left, I think he's just had, kind of had a, a rake around in there. Um, uh, as an audiologist, I wouldn't really interfere with granulation tissue at all. Um, but typically ENT doctors don't mind and for some reason most of the doctors that I talk to they actually view granulation tissue as, as unhelpful in the ear and they, they attempt to destroy it or cauterize it with silver nitrate which I'm not really I don't really have a full understanding of um, because granulation tissue is a good thing surely isn't it the body's healing um, if anybody knows or has an explanation leave a comment down below um, what, it, what is the, the beef between ENT doctors and granulation tissue not sure. But either way, that's why there's bleeding there. So uh, Anavan has sent the patient back to me and what I'm going to do is see where the sucker is. That's where the first canal cholesteatoma is and it's basically a deep trench. So you know rather than there being a nice smooth layer of bone there it just goes it just goes down into the guy's skull essentially. So what we want to do is capture some imagery to see if we can see the bottom to see if there's anything in there. How deep does it go? We don't know. Uh, is there any granulation in there? Is it infected and so on and so forth? Well, it is probably infected, to be fair. Um, so we're going to attempt this with a 30 degree scope. That doesn't really give me a great image. Uh, and then we'll try with a 70 degree scope. So we can see through a zero degree endoscope at the moment because zero degree, it's looking straight forwards. But a 30 degree scope will not look forward, but look up at 30 degrees or 70 degrees will look up further still. So it's an angled view. Um, but in this case, rather than looking up, I'm going to have to hold the whole thing upside down so we can look down into the trench. Um, I don't think you can, not that I've seen, I don't think you can buy angled endoscopes which look in the reverse direction looking down. So this is a 30 degree scope moving in. And what we can see here, so this is the trench, okay? It's not a fantastic view. And rather than looking down into the trench, we're kind of just looking at the wall, like the medial wall of the trench, trying to suction, but it's, it's actually really difficult. So if this looks like amateur hour regarding the suction probe, I w in my defense, I will say that this is incredibly, incredibly difficult to suction under an angled scope for the simple reason that when you, basically all of your fine motor skills that your brain has developed since birth is basically out the window because when you under an angled scope if you move your hand let's say you move your hand to the right what you see on the screen is like your sucker not moving right but it's moving like off towards a, a weird angle like moving up and to the to the right slightly at one o'clock or whatever and with the 70 degree it's slightly worse so it's almost like your movements that your brain is telling you that you're making the screen is showing something completely different and your hands flying off at a weird angle so you know, you have to kind of adapt really quickly and, and as, as well as kind of looking at what you're doing and trying to be careful, you're trying to play this kind of weird inverted upside down chess game in your head with regarding your motor function. This is 70 degree. We can see now, we can see really nicely inside the trench and yes, all that kind of white wet stuff is just dead skin collecting the trench. Slightly more difficult. Again, with the, the greater the angle, the more sort of off your, your movements are. Now I know that obviously angled scopes are used a lot in arthroscopy and, and fez which is fun, functional endoscopic sinus surgery but remember that i'm inside an in, in ear which is a small space to begin with and the entrance to the canal is not good as i mentioned in the first video so it's already super awkward and the trench again it's not like off at an angle it's in and then it's straight down it's like a 90 degree drop inside this trench so it doesn't show on the the screen but the the suction probe this is a fine end it's got a bend and then it's got like two more bends so I can get inside the, the trench. Um, so it's, it's difficult. And not only that, but as I mentioned earlier, this, th this thing is very, very heavy and I'm having to hold it upside down. Um, 
and the cavity is tender as well so I can't really afford to make any slips or wrong moves so I'm just having to go gently gently here I'm trying to get this dead skin up this is really really tender for the guy he's not really enjoying this at all can we see the bottom of the trench I think we probably can I don't know it's very difficult to discern I think we can see the bottom of the trench but it's not particularly clear and it's it you know what it's so difficult to yeah I think we can see the bottom of it but again it's not it's not good um, that, that shouldn't be there and you can understand even if you're not an ENT surgeon or an audiologist or a general practitioner with a special interest in otology you can understand why you know skin is just getting lost into that pit and and then of course it gets infected because bacteria like to colonize on and eat uh, soggy dead skin so um, that is almost certainly one of the reasons why his cavity was full of pus when he came to see me the first time um, we're not going to be able to see if there's another kind of recess uh, behind the TMJ because we just can't get access to it and it's super sketchy so in a perfect world and I did attempt it I tried to get my scope right in so I could see behind the TMJ joint but it's just way too dangerous because um, angled scopes they're, they're, they're kind of because the end is cut it's beveled yeah there's it's, it's a bit more like a spear I suppose as opposed to a zero degree which is flat so there's slightly more risk of I guess shoving it in somewhere that it's not supposed to go but they're also really long so your normal auto endoscope for suction and things like that it's it's you know what is it it's about the length of my middle finger I suppose whereas an angled scope is like three times that they they don't make them short and stubby and really I think they're probably mostly designed for fez functional endoscopic sinus surgery so and of course the, the deeper you go you know if he moves if he sneezes or freaks out or whatever then there's a, a high chance that I'm going to shove it in somewhere and it you know it's going to it's going to go wrong um, not only will that cause horrendous pain but if I manage to shove it in somewhere it's not supposed to go I mean the, the consequences to that could be absolutely devastating again the facial nerve should be to the left of the sucker so posterior and it, it's it's covered under like a ridge but again that's an area of anatomy that we need to be careful of we certainly don't want to shove it into where we think the tympanic membrane is um, and then of course there are various structures behind that which are at risk as well so uh, but I couldn't really get it in without hurting the guy so I just thought you know what I'm not going to be a, a hero here I've got the main thing that I wanted to get was the image down into the trench again this area where my sucker is here very difficult to access again you can see there's loads of wet keratin there that I've not been able to get Anavan's not been able to get um, and as I said it would be much easier if, he, if the guy was asleep or sedated or whatever but again I'm really pushing the envelope here it is a little bit cleaner actually it is a little bit cleaner which gives us hope um, but it's again that area up there unless you can see nice pink skin underneath it's still no it's still a no-go it still needs to be cleaned so there's, there's there's still wet dead skin which means that what's underneath and that is the key to sort of I guess that's the key to to cleaning a mastoid cavity really or or cleaning any sort of lesion like banal uh, benign necrotizing a tidus externa or whatever if you can't see nice pink tissue underneath and it's just white and wet and sluffy then you don't really know what's underneath and I think that's probably why uh, Lils and I catch a lot of benign necrotizing entitis externa because we basically keep going until we can see healthy tissue underneath so if you ever are any audiologist out there if you're faced with a kind of weird looking ear and you're not sure whether it's a, a crater or there's bone underneath or, or whatever um, as long as you feel confident and the patient's not in pain and so on and so forth um, I would suggest keep going until you can see healthy tissue um, just stripping away this this stuff here that's maybe the facial ridge roughly where it is but I just I don't know the anatomy is so bizarre to me that I can't really make you know a proper educated guess as to what I'm seeing to be to be frank with you going in again with a 70 degree I think the 30 degree is probably a waste of time to be honest um, so it'll, it'll probably continue to gather dust as as time goes by um, so we'll just kiss the surface of this trench again but again uh, as you can imagine the guys the guys had enough um, so what's next probably uh, a CT scan and a CT scan is just you know a bunch of x-rays kind of 
I guess, layered together by a computer, hence computer tomography scan. Um, and that will be able to tell Anavan exactly, you know, sort of in 3D, I suppose, uh, how, how deep the trench goes and what's the best surgical approach for it. Um, I imagine the modus operandi here is to, to, in a way, kind of make the cavity bigger, I suppose, by drilling everything away so it's smooth. But I don't know, is he going to reconstruct anything with cartilage and so on and so forth? I, I don't know at this stage. It's such, a, it's such an unusual case that I, I suppose the surgery has to be in many ways customised for this particular patient. So anyway, just a very quick update there. But uh, I promised I would do one. And of course, I always like doing videos with angled scopes because it's... Um, it just allows you to see things that you wouldn't normally see with a regular endoscope or microscope or loops or an otoscope. So there we go. Um, again, if I hear any more, I will of course update you on this very interesting case. I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions or insights into granulation, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.